Hi everybody, it's Patrick from Team Cool Guy. 80 foot tall demons are very expensive. If you only draw from two dimensions and you only ever work in two dimensions, you can't fully understand where the light is going to fall, right? Because it's going to fall in unpredictable ways. Where on the armor lights up and where on the armor is in shadow, relatively speaking. And you only get that if you have a three dimensional object. Hi everybody, it's Patrick from Team Cool Guy. I thought I would uh, record a quick little uh, video right now to uh, talk about a project I'm working on and uh, part of the process. I am a fantasy painter. I love drawing and painting fantastical scenes. It's actually pretty hard to hire a model to pose for some fantastical scenes, right? So let's imagine you've got a scene where an 80 foot tall demon thing is attacking a castle and there's a knight in the foreground trying to um, defend that castle. That actually is, it's pretty expensive to try to put that together so-called in real life. 80 foot tall demons are very expensive and knights in shining armor are very expensive as well. So rather than hire that stuff, it might be a good idea for you to actually learn how to sculpt it. And so this is one of the characters I've sculpted in uh, monster clay in this case. I love working with monster clay. A few things to note about it. Well, first, right off the bat, why I sculpt a thing rather than just sort of draw it from my imagination. It's always better if you can draw or paint from the three-dimensional object. When we learn how to draw uh, humans, when we do portraiture, it's always a better idea to actually have a live model than actually to draw from a photograph. I mean, obviously, if you have to draw from a photograph, you can't help it, but it's better to work in, the, in three dimensions. In this case, uh, I thought it way better to work in three dimensions on this knight in armor because I don't need to get the details down. I I don't need to you know his face for instance doesn't need to be perfectly rendered but i want the light i want to get a sense for how the light hits uh different parts of his armor right so he, this guy's got a series of plates as armor uh for the barding i think it's called on his horse and uh you know where on the armor uh lights up and where on the armor is in shadow relatively speaking and you only get that if you have a three-dimensional object and that's why i've you know carved this thing out of monster clay which again i love i love working with it uh and it's also i think steel and aluminum and definitely dirty paper towel and some mesh as well for the uh chain armor underneath the plate armor uh, this is a uh sculpture of the fella who is defending the city so he's in the foreground and this here of course is the um big ugly demon who's attacking the castle at the moment in uh also in monster clay and a bit of steel and some wood and chain i got a hold of from michael's and again the reason i sculpt this stuff in monster clay which I, again i love when light hits the object if you only draw from two dimensions and you only ever work in two dimensions you can't fully understand where the light is going to fall right because it's going to fall in unpredictable ways given that uh there's going to be reflected light bouncing around within the image itself whereas if i just punt, if i just shine a light on this thing i'll be able to see uh where where light's going to fall at a given spot and where shadows are going to fall based on you know how light actually falls on the three-dimensional object because light scales so that's pretty much it just wanted to get that video out about why I like to work in uh, three dimensions and why I love to sculpt some of my weird paintings in uh, monster clay before I actually sit down to uh, putting charcoal to paper or pencil to paper or brush to canvas. Okay, that's it. Again, sorry for the interruption. Please stay tuned for the videos on values. Take care. See you soon.